I recently replaced a holding in my portfolio with one that's received very little attention since its launch almost two years ago. I have mentioned it twice briefly on this channel, once a year ago and then again somewhat recently. It's a monthly paying ETF that offers a higher yield than what I originally owned and offers share price and dividend growth. So today I'll go into what I recently sold, what I bought using the proceeds, and why I made this decision. To start, the holding that I sold was DIVO, which is the Amplified CWP Enhanced Dividend Income ETF. This ETF, according to its description, is an actively managed fund of high-quality large-cap companies with a history of dividend growth along with a tactical covered call strategy. Devo strategically designed to offer higher levels of total return on a risk-adjusted basis. The ETF pursues income from two different sources, which are the dividend-paying stocks it holds and by opportunistically writing covered calls on those stocks. Devo also seeks to be less volatile than the overall market. It pays monthly dividends and currently offers a yield of about 4.82% according to its website. I want to start off by saying that there's nothing at all wrong with this holding. Ever since I first started buying this ETF, Devo's been providing me with some pretty good returns. The main reason why I sold this ETF was because it holds a lot of duplicate companies that I hold inside of other ETFs. For example, Devo holds companies like Verizon, Pepsi, Home Depot, and a lot of other S&P 500 stocks. Another holding that I have, which is SCHD, has all of these same stocks and many of the others that are also in Devo. Additionally, a lot of these holdings are also in my favorite high-income ETF, which is SPYI, or the NEOS S&P 500 High Income ETF. And so I figured it was just redundant to hold a lot of these exact same holdings inside of a third ETF, and I've been in the process this year of better diversifying my portfolio across more holdings and across more sectors. Devo was always a very small part of my overall portfolio, only making up about 1.3% of my holdings. So with that in mind, although it's been a really good ETF, I decided to swap this position out for something different. What I swapped DIVO for was for an ETF that also pays monthly dividends and aligns with my goals with being better diversified. My latest holding is IDVO, which is the Amplified CWP International Enhanced Dividend Income ETF. According to its fact sheet, IDVO is designed to offer monthly income while providing high risk-adjusted returns through high-quality international companies. IDVO seeks to provide gross annual income of approximately 3-4% from dividend income and 2-4% from option premiums. IDVO might seem like an odd choice given how obscure it is. It's not even 1 30th of the size of Devo in terms of assets under management. But there's a few reasons why I chose this ETF that I'll get into. In my dividend portfolio, I have a mixture of both high-yielding investments that offer very little growth in terms of share price or dividend increases. But then the other part of my portfolio is dedicated to lower yielding investments with a minimum 4% yield that do offer both share price and dividend increases. Devo was one of those growth holdings that I had, so I wanted to replace it with another stock or fund that provides me with good growth. The first reason why I chose this ETF was because it holds international stocks. Up until recently, my dividend portfolio had very little international exposure. Some of my closed-end funds did have a small amount of international debt, but I didn't hold anything that specifically targeted international companies. As I mentioned in the beginning, I've been working to better diversify my portfolio this year. That includes diversifying into preferred holdings and now a higher amount of companies outside the U.S. On its website, you can see it holds companies from a wide range of countries, with Japan, the U.K., and Brazil accounting for a good amount. Not only does it add more diversification in terms of international holdings, but IDVO itself is more diversified than DIVO. Right now IDVO holds 68 stocks, whereas DIVO only holds 36. So that was another incentive for me to making this switch. Like I said earlier, this ETF also pays monthly dividends, which is always better. But even better than that, IDVO has historically provided an even higher yield than DIVO has. According to its funds page, DIVO currently yields 4.82%, whereas IDVO yields almost 6%. This was the second reason why I decided to make this switch. The smaller ETF has been able to provide investors with not only a higher yield, but even better returns up to this point at least. This is all past performance and it does not guarantee future performance, but you can see that IDVO has been the better performer since its inception. Note that Devo's provided an average annual return of over 12%, which is better than the average year in the stock market. Again, Devo's been a really good holding, but IDVO has been able to provide an even better return with a higher yield. Amplify stock picking strategy has just been doing much better when they're able to pick companies from all over the world and not just the US. 
In less than two years, IDVOs delivered a total return of 37.89%, which comes out to a little over 18% per year. Devo's been around much longer, having been launched back in 2018, so it's not exactly a fair comparison going on here, since we can only go back about two years to when IDVO was launched. There can be periods where international stocks will beat the U.S. stock market, but the U.S. stock market usually does better than a lot of international markets. Also, depending on the market, some countries actually pay much higher than average dividends compared to what we see in the States. The strategy this ETF pursues is very similar to Devo's. First, they screen for companies that have provided long-term dividend growth and are reporting metrics that suggest they'll be able to continue to grow their distributions. Then they make sure the holdings are well diversified, not just across sectors, but also countries. Once they hand-select their holdings, they then implement a tactical covered call strategy. And so far, this strategy has been working very well for this ETF. Just like DIVO, IDVO has been able to grow their dividends over time. The growth isn't exactly spectacular, and it varies from month to month due to its covered call strategy, but it's still been moving upwards regardless. Compared with Devo, IDVO's dividend growth has been just a bit slower, but that's because international stocks haven't been growing as fast as the US stock market has recently. You can see both funds suffered a bit of a downfall earlier this month, but both have since about recovered. IDVO is up about 20% in share price since its IPO. Then finally, if we take a look at what's inside IDVO, we'll see its largest holding makes up 3.55% of this ETF as of August 19th. This is much better than Devo, whose largest holding makes up 6.12%. The biggest holding is SAP, who have paid growing dividends since the late 90s. Ferrari comes in second, which was kind of surprising to me. They've only been listed since 2016, but their dividend growth has been pretty spectacular. Ferrari pays dividends on an annual basis, so it's great that IDVO's been able to stretch out their dividends to monthly payments. In third for this ETF is Relics, a UK-based industrial company. They've also paid dividends since 2008 without skipping a quarter. So in summary, IDVO's been a really good option for people who want both international exposure and a high monthly dividend. Devo's been such a good holding that it's good amplifies using a similar strategy into other sectors. The only downside to this fund is that it does have a higher expense ratio than Devo, so if you are really concerned about that, then it might be a deterrent for you. But there really aren't too many options that exist for people who want international exposure and a high monthly growing dividend. But with that being said, that's going to conclude today's video. If you'd like to connect and also see what's inside my own personal dividend portfolio, then feel free to check me out over on our Patreon, where you'll receive updates and be able to talk to me and other higher yielding dividend and income investors. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and until next time, take care.